I love it how you just always think I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> Can we get a professional in here? I don't know about this guy. <laughs> <laughs> With that image that I have in my head of what I wanted Nanji to look like, it's slowly coming to shape. And I think that image might be okay. pretty good in the end I'm pretty stoked with how it's going to turn out I think just by changing the color of it it'll look like progress so I think I'm going to do some primary the first slops oh yeah the first slops that feels good oh the first bits feel so good Gotta look sick! We've had a little afternoon drive. We needed to escape out of the boatyard for a bit. So I just needed that little bit of salt fix, you know, we're both going a little bit insane. Benita's been working hard on the computers, in the aircon, in the, in the apartment, and I've been sitting there hard slapping it out on the boat. It's just nice to come out to the beach and have a little break and go for a drive and just explore this area. We've been here for like, I don't know, two months and we haven't really left the boatyard. So we've come, we found ourselves a nice little beach. One of the downsides about the beaches around you know there's just so much pollution and so much plastic and it's just really frustrating to see there's such a beautiful area and you just always see this plastic on the beach it's a bit of a segue into the sponsor of this video which is native deodorants these guys have just put out a range which is plastic free packaging if everyone just does their bit like that and just tries to reduce the amount of plastic they're used it's it's a big step in the right in the right direction i know we're not all perfect and plastic is a part of part of our life these days but it's just great that companies are out there and they're looking at different ways of packaging products rather than using single-use plastic native are also a contributor for one percent of the planet which means that for all the sales of these plastic free deodorants then they donate 1% of the sales towards environmentally friendly non-for-profit organisations. We got three different scents this time. We got cucumber and mint, which is very fresh. We got candy cane as well, which smells very sweet and pepperminty. And then we got the all-time favourite classic, which is uh, the coconut and vanilla. So these are vegan and cruelty free, so they're nice to animals. And uh, they're also paraben, sulfate and aluminium free as well. So it's nice for your skin. Three plastic free deodorants are normally $39, but uh, Native have given us a code for you guys. So if you use this code, you can get 25% off and get three for $29. Native ship to these countries and it's free shipping in the US. I finally, finally convinced Josh to come down to the hairdresser here and he's having a few issues. He's just too, he's just too busy. He just doesn't have time for this. It's not a priority of his. He has to get his hair cut today, otherwise I'm gonna be so upset. Like, he has to get his hair cut. They're like, looking at it like, we don't know what to do, but. This is so funny. Josh, Josh has like a really bad habit of making dreadlocks in his hair because he had dreadlocks for so long. You know, when he's sitting down at night relaxing, he's been twisting his hair into these dreadlocks. And so the hairdressers are trying to cut his hair, but they're really confused about what the hell is going on. <laughs> Josh is like, <laughs> they're like, no, no. <laughs> Like, this one cannot, this one cannot. 
Cannot, cannot brush it. Like, just cut it. There's still lots of hair and just brush it out. No, no. Oh, they've never Must seen a go. dreadlock. Yeah. <laughs> so they wanted to shave your head. Yeah, they wanted to shave my head. They're like, number one, number two, can. That's oh, it. God. I'm like, well, take this shit off me then because you're not shaving my head. <laughs> <laughs> so right, I stormed we're, out. We're gonna go home and brush it out, hey? Yeah. Alright. There was one pretty crazy uh, storm last night. <laughs> Lasted for a good four or five hours and come over the boat this morning. I'm glad I covered everything up properly because there were some puddles of water around. There's a lot of water on the ground and it's still very wet and real cloudy and misty this morning. So probably a good day for painting downstairs. We'll continue on with the prime. So uh, last night I tried to stay back. I was going to work into the dark and uh, prime up the aft cabin and the V berth. But when I was halfway through the aft cabin, it was getting darker. I realized that I'd taken all the lights out. <laughs> And so I didn't have any lights to turn on. So I was in the dark and I thought, well, I'll move to the V-Berth and I'd done the same in there. So there was no lights. And so I'm interested to see how my uh, my painting went, the priming went in the uh, aft cabin. I just kind of, when I couldn't do the edges, I just moved in. I put used the rest of my paint just through the middle. <laughs> Let's go have a suss of what that looks like. This is gonna look sick. I'm glad Benita convinced me to get some like cornicing stuff to go along the top of where the joins are. Cause that looks really cool. Looks a bit fancy. All right, I'm gonna get Nick some primer and let's get all this done. Crank some tunes and get into it. Well, that image that I have in my head of what I wanted Nanji to look like, it's slowly coming to shape. And I think that image might be okay. I have a good feeling about this one. Alrighty, prepare for me to have a bit of a rant because this is absolutely ridiculous. How is this for management skills? So we, we plan on having our baby in Penang and we wanted to keep Nanji in Straits Key Marina where we were to have a 20 week scan. And when we went there uh, six, eight weeks ago, 10 weeks ago now, we made it certainly clear that we'd like to make a booking from the very 1st of December that we will be leaving our boat inside this marina for three months. And they said, oh yeah, well, we can write that down. Oh, we only work on a week to week basis. So yeah, well, that's fine, but we will definitely be having our boat in here at this time because we're having our baby and everything else. So we would appreciate it if you could write that down and know that we are coming. And I've just received an email stating that they can only take us for the first two weeks of December now because they have other bookings. I'm like, well, how can you have other bookings if I've already booked it for fucking three months? And so I speak to them on the phone and the answer I get is, oh, well, things change. Things change. May I, I can't understand why we have been bumped to to not have our boat in there. You would think that you would you would like to have a vessel for a longer term, so they're always paying your fees. I know it's a small marina, and and boats are trying to get in there, but to drop the old oh borders are closed and people can't go anywhere. Nothing's changed for the past six months, mate. And we booked that that long ago, but yet now our booking isn't as important as someone else's. I am that frustrated and that pissed off right now because not being able to leave Nanji in Penang, there's no anchorage we can leave there, there's no other marina where we can leave it there. And we, for the healthcare reasons, we, we want to be in Penang so we can have our baby in the hospital that, uh, that we have chosen. And now they're saying that, well, you can't have your boat, you need to be able to leave your boat somewhere else. And so Pancor Marina, where we are at the moment, is three hours drive away from Penang. I'm guessing that I've just had a little bright spark in my little head that so he can take us for the first two weeks, but his excuses were, well, we can't make people leave. So if they're open for two weeks, then 
we might as well jump in there because they can't make people leave. Maybe that's the answer to our problems. That might have flipped around back on you, buddy. Whoa, rant over. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how about we just move on in there and then, sweet, you can't make us leave. Yeah, exactly. We're in the hospital and stuff. We're having a baby. Like, you know, we can't move the boat. Exactly right. What do you reckon? Should we run on that? I don't know. We could try. Yeah. I don't know, Yash. I know it's a little bit risky, but fuck, you can't. He's telling us he can't kick people out. Well, you can't kick us out either then. I don't know. Ask Kevin. Kevin's just going to tell him to fuck off. <laughs> I don't know, Yash. I don't play these games, right? All right, I'm sorry, kids. I just had a brainwave, so I thought I'd just share it with you. Yeah. All right, we'll see you in a bit. Yeah, alright, thank you. See ya. <laughs> oh, it's a risky business what we play in, isn't it, puppy dog? Grenada in the house. Yeah. You ready to work? Ready. I got my working shoes on. Give us a look at those working shoes. Check them out. Oh yeah. I'm ready to work. Let's do this. <laughs> on Nanji, the lower stays and shrouds are bolted through the hull. Those bolts go through to the inside where the wood finishing is going to be. And so rather than cut the wood around these, the plates for it, we're going to remove the plates and then put the wood underneath it to give it a better look. And also just to have a look at our rigging. We've never pulled these bolts out before or had a look. So that's what we're doing now. Just be careful vessel. Oh, careful the belly. You know, it's a bit bigger these days. Well, you're right, you need me to stand down there. Careful your knees. It's gonna hurt. It's like a cheese grater up there. It is a grater. Oh my god. Oh, she's up. That's how a seven month pregnant chick climbs a scaff. <laughs> yeah. Good work. I'm amazed I've still got some breath. <laughs> The thing about Nandy's rigging is that we are well over rigged. We have 14 wires that are holding up the mast and two of them are running stays, running back stays. And as much as a pain in the ass they are at times when you're sailing because they get in the way when you're jibing and that sort of stuff. And when there's wind, you generally have them on. But when we're doing stuff like maneuvering the rigging around and taking stuff off, it's they're super handy because you can kind of, you just move the back, the, the running stay around to wherever the piece of rigging, the standing rigging that you're, that you're loosening and taking off. So you just tighten up your running back stay and you can loosen the other one. The mast ain't going to go anywhere. No bloody not. <laughs> yeah. Get out of there, Since we're going to loosen all the turnbuckles and loosen this right off, it's probably a good excuse to fill them up with anti seize again. This is stop, kind of stops stainless from binding and the metals binding together. Keep them loose. So I've marked on the thread where the turnbuckle is so I know when to tighten it up to. Wanna take it off again? Hmm. I love it how you just always think I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> you always say, don't do that, you might break something. <laughs> I put them here. Uh, I did this. Where's your tickets? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see your qualifications. <laughs> I used to be an advanced rigger in the marine and construction industries. And not in the marine. <laughs> not in marine, that's the whole not point. Not in sailing. Back in the day, I used to build met masts, which are, met, are weather stations. They're a single thing that goes straight up and they're just wires down to the ground on either side that hold them up. Like, <laughs> it's the exact same I wanna purpose. I want to see your tickets. <laughs> I want to see your tickets. Well, uh, they're definitely way expired because well, I didn't pay the government any more money. Get off the job. <laughs> Can we get a professional in here? I don't know about this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Is the mask falling? 
if I take my eyes off it, it might. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to keep watching it to make sure it doesn't fall. <laughs> this guy needs replacing. Ooh. All right, we're going to start from the bottom. So I'm going to put this on the bottom nut. You ready? Yeah. All right, you, you turn yours. What? You turn yours. You turn yours. Yeah, that's good. You got him off. Next one. What? Next one. Get your shit out. I can't hear you. Good work. I love it when you yell at me through the window. <laughs> You're the one trying to conversate with me. I'm just like, huh? What? <laughs> what? It's spinning. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's that's done. I gotta. Mix up epoxy and sort this out, so drill some holes. Do you need the, oh yeah, we do one side at a time. Yeah, honey. just one at a time. So my work here is done? Your work here is done. So well, now. I know my nuts and bolts. No, your nuts and bolts, babe. <laughs> Where's the, uh, the one that was binded? Here. Yeah. So that's like seized on, like we'll never get that undone. So we'll cut a new thread. Yeah. You got the spare rod? Yep, we've got that rod. I was kind of smart a few, it was a while ago actually, I've been carrying around this 316 endless rod for uh, M12 and M10. And I've used up that extra M10 on the, uh, on the repairs of the hydrovane. And now we're gonna use the M12 stuff for some of these standing rigging. It's good that we're attending to this. You know, this is a little rust stain that's been peeing me off and you know how I get with my top sides. <laughs> Old man with his lawnmower. All right, boss, you want to cut one of them up? Yeah. No, you don't need to do that. Just stand <laughs> I'll just get the saw. Yeah, just jump on the grinder, babe. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, mama. You're dismissed. <laughs> I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. I've finished the woodwork. <laughs> what a feeling that is, and this has taken me a very long time. I've just finished off these window trimmings and stuff and filled them up and I've sanded all of this in the saloon now. So I'm just gonna wipe everything down with acetone and then I'm gonna prime up in the saloon here to match it with the V-berth and the aft cabin and then so everything's up to the same level of uh, first coat of primer. But the big debate is, this bulkhead behind us. Now, people are probably going to swear at me because I'm saying that we're going to paint it. We're going to paint it white, and it's a bit of, I know, it's a bit of a naughty thing to do if you ask a few salties about uh, painting woodwork, traditional woodwork in boats. You should keep that varnished and highlighted as varnished, but we're going to paint that white because we want to brighten up this whole area down here and that's just such a major area and it's a big dark wall but like everything now will be glossed so everything will be shiny and I think by making that wall glossy white as well it's going to make everything just really pop out and be quite bright down here because there isn't a lot of light that does get down here in general so hopefully having a bright white glossy wall matched with all this glossy varnished sides will, should really make Nancy look pretty fresh and sparkling down here. The table is going to be fully high glossed so that'll be a bit more of the focal point down here. So yeah that's the idea. Generally a lot of boats they'll have like a gloss roof and gloss floor and then all the walls and stuff will be matte but we have a vinyl roof and a vinyl floor and so we're going to gloss all the walls instead so we'll go on a little bit of the opposite side of things but I know, I think this will turn out, it'll look really, really nice in the end. The only bad thing about the, the complaint that I'm having with my idea of painting this white is the fact that the anchor locker threw up into the V-berth, that wall was going to remain varnished or else there'd be too much white up there, so they'll remain varnished. And then in the aft cabin, the back wall is going to be painted, so there's going to be paint, paint, varnish. Not that that's really such a big thing, it's just more something that's been playing in my head because I've been thinking about it for so long, but... I don't know, well today I'm just going to wipe everything down with that state and I'm going to primer up all this and see the difference that it makes. Starting to get to the beauty side of things. So this is 
This is what we've been waiting for and this is what all this hard work has been for is to make Nanji beautiful and comfortable and a nice area and a nice space to be living in. Till it gets covered in piss, poo and spew. Woo -hoo.